Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm so happy to be back. I haven't filmed or posted a video in a week, so um, I'm really happy to be back. And today's video is going to be a juicy one. Everyone wants me to talk about this. I feel like people have DM'd me about this. People have commented about this. People have, uh, when I posted, you know, what do you guys want to see? Like, this was a subject that got requested the most, singleness. And, I kind of didn't want to talk about this. Let me just get straight into the video. It's not a bad thing to desire to get married. It's not a bad thing to desire to have a significant other in a godly, um, biblical way. You know, not messing around or anything like that. A hard thing for me to accept. As a new believer, the last thing you should be worried about is a significant other. And the last thing you should be worried about who your husband is, the last thing you should be worried about when you're going to get married, that is the last thing you need to be thinking about. You don't even need to be thinking about that. And I say this because when I barely got saved, the first thing that I got attacked on was this. And the enemy will use distraction. If he can't pull you away, he will distract you. This is one of the things he will use. He will make you focus on the fact that you're single and he will make you focus on, oh, who's the one? Who is going to be the one? Who's gonna be my husband? Ugh. I don't even wanna talk about this. <laughs> so, when you begin to idolize this idea of, I want to be married, I want to, you know, um, who's going to be my future husband? Ooh, is that him? Ooh, is that him? Oh, no, wait, is that him? You know, I just feel like it's so easy to fall into this trap. And I know I'm not the only one because we do get attacked by similar spirits once you're safe. So, for example, I used to work in the gym. Every person that walked into the gym, I would look at them, look at their body, look at what they look like. If I knew them, I would... Um, judge basically just judge them on the way they look like oh he's cute oh no he's not cute and you know oh I should talk to him or oh I should talk to him things like that in the world so when I got into church I feel like this same spirit followed me <laughs> into the church and I go to a good-looking church you know there's a lot of good-looking people that go to my church um, so with that being said I, yeah, I did get attacked by the same spirit in a way that I was deceived thinking like, ooh, maybe he's my future husband, ooh, maybe that's my man of God, ooh, maybe that's him. And guys, it's not a bad thing to want to get married. Trust me, it's not. Uh, this is mainly like towards new believers. And not even just new believers, but people who haven't got delivered yet. Because as new believers, we have so much that needs to get taken off. We have so much that we need to get delivered from before we even think about being with somebody else. And when you come to the realization that, you know, there are people that are standing before God. And God is telling them, depart from me, I never knew you, worker of iniquity. Like, just think about that every single day. People are standing before God and he they're going to hell. He's telling them, depart from me. I never knew you, worker of iniquity. Just grasp that. Just think about that. Just think about how you are saved and you know the truth and you know the gospel. And there are people standing before God hearing that. Marriage is awesome. Marriage is like amazing. But the bigger picture... Is the kingdom and I feel like in the Christian world we forget about that and we're just so concerned with who am I gonna marry where is my man of God where is my Proverbs 31 woman where's my Boaz like I'm not condemning anyone because literally this is an advice I could have taken from myself like a month ago but <laughs> it's just something that we need to realize that marriage is not the most important thing to to lead souls towards Jesus. That's the main thing that we should be working towards. You know, it's great to want to be married. It's great to want to have a husband. It's great to want to have a wife. It's great to want to have a family. Trust me, I, I desire that. And those are good desires that God puts in our heart. But we need to remember what comes first. And that is the Great Commission. That is 
God's people. That is the lost and the broken. We need to focus on the kingdom. We need to have a kingdom mentality because if we're really, really focused on, oh, I'm single, who am I gonna marry? Guess who we're gonna, guess who we're gonna find? We're gonna find another person who's, oh, I'm single, who am I gonna marry? And once you get married, all you're gonna do is look at each other. All you're gonna do is look at each other, two imperfect, two imperfect people looking at each other to make each other happy is literally a recipe for disaster. And I know I hated hearing this, I really did, where they're like, just focus on Jesus and run as fast as you can towards him and then when you look to your right, there he's gonna be, you're gonna come when you least expect it and blah blah blah, you know. I, I know we've all heard that and I remember being so annoyed by that, but it's, it's true. Like, you want someone who cares about the lost and the broken, you want someone who cares about leading souls towards Jesus. And if you focus on that, the person you end up with is going to be a person who is focusing on that. And if there's two people that come together that focus on leading souls towards Jesus, that is a godly marriage. That is a marriage that glorifies God. And that is the goal. You want a marriage that glorifies God. A marriage that glorifies our Father in Heaven. And when two people come together, and their main goal in life is to lead people towards Christ. That's what else what else can you ask for? That'll be that'll be better than anything you can imagine. That'll be the marriage that God intended you to be in. I don't even know what this video is going to come out like, but with all of that being said, um and trust me, this is advice that I'm literally giving to myself too because I have to cast down these thoughts and whenever you get these thoughts like oh I think that's my husband or oh I think that's him seek first the kingdom of God that's the first thing I tell that's what I always tell myself whenever I feel these thoughts coming in or these desires or these lusts coming in or these distractions the first thing I say seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added to you so especially as a new believer you guys especially as a new believer our main focus is Jesus and remember that no marriage, no husband, no wife can fulfill you the way Jesus does and yes you can get lonely, yes you can get frustrated, yes it can be boring being single, right? We all felt those feelings but we need to remember that we're never alone and that Jesus said he will never leave us or forsake us. and. In this season of singleness it's really important to let God develop you and let God deliver you from anger bitterness hate unforgiveness to let God you know peel off everything take off everything that we've picked up from when we were in the world and let him evolve us let him let him transform us let God transform you so you can be more Christ-like and focus on God and that's just that's really the main thing that I can really say also you need to humble yourself know where you're at in your walk you need to know where you're at in your walk look at yourself look at your prayer life look at the spiritual warfare that you're going through and look at how you're handling it and ask yourself can I handle a covenant can I handle a covenant between me God and another person can I handle that humble yourself don't don't ask god to humble you you humble yourself and ask yourself honestly am i ready to carry the weight of a marriage and i'm not saying that oh marriage is going to be horrible marriage is a covenant with god and it will be spiritually attacked and you need to know how to pray you need to know how to um, overcome in spiritual warfare you need to know your word you need to be transformed and I'm not saying that you have to be perfect when you get married. I'm not saying that. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is the spiritual warfare that comes with the marriage will be on another level. It's not, it's not the kind of spiritual warfare that we face as baby Christians or we face in our first year as Christians. You know, it is a covenant with God. What happened in the Garden of Eden? Adam and Eve, they got attacked. Since the beginning, it was attacked. So, with that being said, humble yourself and know where you're at in your walk. And this is something I had to do myself. 
I had to look at myself and say, Hey, look, I've been walking with God for this much time. This is how much I pray. This is the kind of spiritual warfare I'm going through. And this is how I'm handling it. Hmm. Hmm. Can I handle a marriage? Can I handle a relationship? No. 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 So let God transform you. Wash yourself in the word every day. You can pray for your future husband. You can pray for your future spouse. Um, you know, prayers like, um, God, I pray that you bless my future spouse with wisdom, with revelation. Prayers like that. Not prayers like, oh God, send him right now with blue eyes and purple hair. I mean, we've all prayed a prayer like that. I mean, he'll grab all the desires of your heart. Prayers that will help your future spouse spiritually. And that's another thing I had to learn. I couldn't, I couldn't be so stuck on, oh, I want my future spouse to have green eyes and be six foot and have this color hair. And no, you don't want to get sucked into that. Yes, he will grant all the desires of your heart, but that's a very easy way to get distracted and to let lust in. So if you're going to pray for your future spouse during singleness, make them prayers that will help them spiritually, um, financially, career-wise, um, you know, things like that. You never want to focus on the physical and, oh, I pray that he holds my hand when we are walking to the store or in Walmart, I don't know. You know, you don't want to focus on prayers like that. That is like a huge distra distraction and a really easy way to let lust in. So guard your heart, guard your eyes, you know, whenever you feel like, if you know you're in a season where you're not ready, if you know that you know that you know that you're not ready and you know that it's not your time to be in a relationship or courting or whatever the case may be, then whenever these thoughts come, you cast it down using scripture. The way I like to cast every single thought that comes my way that I know um, is clearly a distraction. You know, if a good looking guy walks by and I'm like, oh wow, maybe that's my future spouse. No, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added to you. And that's how I cast them down. I use that scripture. That's the scripture that has helped me a lot in this little battle that I had going on with singleness. There won't be another time like this where it's just you and God. It's just you and God in the prayer closet. And it's just you and God, God developing you, God, you know, uh, revealing his purpose to you, God helping you, God leading you, guiding you, telling you, you know, this is what you're going to do in life and this is the purpose and this is why I sent you here and this is why you're on earth because of this. You know, another thing is, um, what's your purpose in life? What's your purpose? What's your kingdom purpose? What is the purpose that God has on your life? What is it? What has God called you to do? You can't, you can't be in a relationship with someone and then this person wants to go this way and you want to go this way, you know? And if you're married, like, what are you going to do? You're both going two different directions. So that's another thing. You need to know what you, what your purpose is. What has God called you to do? You need to make sure you know what God has called you to do. You need to make sure you know what your purpose is because you never want to be with someone who's going the opposite direction of you. You want to grow together and go in the same direction, be on the same page. And the last thing I will say, and I got this from... I learned this from Kayan Tilton. She has a single diaries um, and she watched this series, which I will link down below that says, are you the person, the person you want to be with wants to be with? Let's say you're freshly saved and you want to be with someone who has been saved for like four years. Example. Let's say this is an example. You're like, wow, I really love the character traits of this person who has been saved four years, but I just got saved three months ago. Would a person like this, want to be with the person like this, who is barely developed in Jesus. No, the when a person like this will want to be with the person like this is when this person is developed and equally yoked. And then once you're equally yoked, then you can be together. You know what I'm saying? So just allowing God to grow you is the major key to being single and being content and being single is knowing that God is growing you and knowing that God is transforming you and knowing that our main focus and our main
purpose and our main thing that we need to think about as being single is who am I leading towards Christ? Who am I who am I sharing the gospel with? Am I praying for the broken? Am I praying for the lost? Am I sharing the gospel? No one in, in heaven is going to be married. Okay, that's in the Bible. That's biblical. When you die and your spouse dies, when we go to heaven, you're not going to be married to them in heaven. That's not how it works. So that's why I said, when you focus on sharing the gospel and you focus on sharing Jesus and you focus on you know the fact that there is people that are not saved and that you need to share the gospel and you need to be that vessel you're gonna end up with someone like that and when two people when two people that share the gospel and care about the lost and the broken come together that's a marriage that glorifies God you know not a marriage that not someone that's like, oh, I'm single, I'm single, I'm Christian, and I'm single, I need someone. Oh, I'm Christian, and I'm single, I'm Christian, and I'm single, I need someone. <gasps> I found someone, and then all you do is look at each other, and that's just a disaster. I don't know how this video ended up. I hope it's not, like, all over the place. But these are just my thoughts and my revelations that I've gotten. Um, don't feel condemned. Don't feel ashamed. We all go through that, especially when we're first saved. If you come out of sexual immorality, if you come out of, you know, a crazy lifestyle, it is normal to be attacked this way. It is normal for lust to come in and it is normal to think that, you know, a relationship will fulfill you. It's normal. That's like, that's what happens in the beginning of our walk. And as I let, as I grew in Christ and as I learned more about Him, as I studied the Word, as I went to Lifestyle of Freedom, you know, and I let my, my, um, you know, the people that speak life into me, I let them speak life into me. You know, I just learn, like, I just learn that. You just have to let God deal with you before anything. Let God deal with you. Let God use you. Let God show you His purpose. Let God do what He needs to do with you in your alone time with God. Before, you know, we start thinking about being married, being in a relationship. And with that being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you guys have any questions down below or any video requests. I will see you guys in my next video. I love you guys so much and I can't wait to talk to you guys in the comments. Bye!